now people don't have, uh, that is institutional investors don't have any easy way to support Bitcoin or buy it in an, in an economically responsible fashion. And so they just stay out. When you see these spot ETFs uh, get put in place, you're going to be creating the equivalent of a six lane super highway between Wall Street and Bitcoin. And now you're going to see billions and billions of dollars flow. In some cases, billions a week. In some cases, could be billions a day. And until you see it, you won't see, you won't see any capital flow from those institutions. It's trapped in the 20th century asset classes. But everything else, Bitcoin is the one non-controversial thing. So it is a legitimate asset. And is it being banned? Obviously not. The Chinese haven't banned it. It's, it's deemed property in China. The Russians haven't banned it. It's property in Russia. The Americans haven't banned it. It's property in America. All of the controversy in our, in our marketplace right now is surrounding crypto exchanges, the trading of unregistered securities, other tokens, and stable coins. And the usage of these crypto tokens as a high-speed dollar substitute a currency substitute. There's lots of controversy there. There will continue to be controversy. Uh, it is unclear how all that sorts itself out, except for the fact that there are two great uh, conclusions you can come to over the past 24 months. Uh, Wall Street, the regulators, and the mainstream investment community endorses Bitcoin and appreciates Bitcoin. And everybody's skeptical of the rest of the crypto ecosystem. Bitcoin, yes. Crypto, not so sure. Right. So that's where we are right now. Um, I have met with lots of lots of executives from these companies that are bringing uh, spot ETFs to market. I can tell you for a fact, nobody wants to fix Bitcoin. Nobody wants to change Bitcoin. They've approached it with humility. They've approached it with grace. Their view is Bitcoin is a digital asset. People in the world seem to want it. Um, we should do our part to provide services to make it easy to acquire and hold Bitcoin. Now, in, in time, right, uh, the, the first and easiest step and the most critical step is that spot ETF because that will open up the, the super highway for it's like a power, a power line for hundreds of billions of dollars of capital to flow into the ecosystem. But eventually, Google and Apple will embrace Bitcoin. And when Google or Apple embraces Bitcoin and Apple puts some sort of Bitcoin signing device into the iPhone, there will be some people that will be skeptical and they will say, oh, we can never trust Apple. And that's reasonable. And other people will say, oh, well, it's an option for the masses that don't know how to you know, operate their own hardware wallet. And there'll be a debate. And then there'll be an avalanche and then Apple you know, and the Amazon will do something and then Microsoft will build it into their browser and then people will hate that. And then some other company will come up with a better Bitcoin only one and we'll like that. And maybe they'll succeed and they'll grow and be 10 or 100x and maybe they won't. And then maybe at some point we'll wake up and there'll be four billion dollars, which will be of, of four billion people and they will custody some amount of their own Bitcoin. And then they will have other Bitcoin that will be in an ETF in their retirement plan because their employer required that they actually have their retirement plan uh, with a securities custodian. And, and the world will be heterogeneous. And every, you know, we should embrace everybody that supports Bitcoin, however they support Bitcoin. You won't agree with them. Maybe you won't like that nation and you won't like that company and you won't like that money manager. And you will always have the option to do your own thing. And that's what makes Bitcoin beautiful. The most important one, the one that's going to dominate this cycle, is going to be the spot ETF. Because futures ETFs are just literally defective, right? If, if I said I'm going to charge you a 10% fee per year to invest your money, like your money's gone in seven years, right? I'm just taking it all, right? So the spot ETF is going to be critical. It's going to solve the problem of, of how do I custody the Bitcoin? M most of these companies uh, and investors, if, 
if they want to establish their own custody program, it's, it's very scary, right? Have you noticed how many custodians have failed? And the issue is, how do I find an institutional grade custodian? And okay, well, you could say like, you should self custody. Well, how does, you know, who at Microsoft is supposed to self custody? <laughs> like, do you want to get, you, you're going to give $100 billion of Bitcoin to, to the CFO and have the CFO walk around with the private keys? Like who wants that job, right? Like how are you gonna, you're gonna do multi-sig? Well, which three people at Microsoft, right? So it becomes a question and it takes them a year or two years to answer the question. And is it possible? Sure it is, it just takes two or three years. And so if, if we want mass adoption, we have to solve the problem of custody and then we have to solve the problem of compliance, right? If, if I'm an investor and I have $10 billion of capital and I want to buy $100 million worth of Apple stock, I can do it in 30 seconds via BlackRock or via one of my major money managers. And I don't even have to, I don't even have to come up with $100 million. I could, I could have a nickel make a phone call and say, buy $100 million of Apple stock, put the phone down and have all the money at the end of the day without putting up in cash. And it would be my bank, like JP Morgan, that would front me the money. So you see, it's completely financeable, no money down. I can do it in 30 seconds. And then it flows into my systems, like my accounting system, my compensation system. When Apple stock doubles, the portfolio manager that actually made the buy wants to get paid. So how do I attribute the success of the investment to the person that made the investment when it's changing every minute of the day? How do I pay taxes on it? How do I make sure I don't have a Nick Leeson situation where one portfolio manager makes a $10 billion bet and bankrupts the entire firm, right? So these are all pedestrian problems, but they're solved by that spot ETF plugged into the money manager. That's gonna be the number one driver, right? And, and that's gonna dwarf everything else in the near term. Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy and a prominent figure in the world of cryptocurrency, had shared his insights on the impending Bitcoin price surge. Saylor believes that a Bitcoin tsunami is on the horizon, driven by growing institutional adoption and increasing global economic uncertainty. He emphasizes that Bitcoin's scarcity and its potential to act as a store of value make it an attractive asset. Saylor's bullish stance is rooted in the belief that Bitcoin will continue to gain traction as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation, ultimately fueling the anticipated price surge in the cryptocurrency market. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.